Inserting a pivot table from Power Pivot is extremely easy. And once you know how to pivot data from a standard pivot table in Excel, pivoting data from Power Pivot isn't any different at all. To insert a pivot table from the home ribbon in the pivot table in the Power Pivot ribbon, you have this pivot table box and a little down arrow. This allows you to select what it is you want to insert. For example, you can insert a pivot table or a chart. You can insert both a table and a chart horizontally or vertically to each other. You can insert two charts, you could insert four charts together, or you can insert a flattened pivot table. We look at flattened pivot table in a moment, but the first thing we're going to look at is a normal pivot table and inserting a standard pivot table. So when you say insert pivot table, you get this normal pivot table box that you'd be familiar with from Excel that we want to put it onto a new worksheet. We then have our pivot table, our empty pivot table over here on the left. And on the right, right what we have is our field lists. Now our field lists, we have an option between active and all. At the moment, there is nothing active, so we don't see any fields in here. So we can work from all, but if there's fields missing, remember to check your all. Here then we see each table that's available in our pivot table model. So we have a calendar table, a credit notes table, a customer's table. We also have invoice table, products table, sales rep and date. If we click into any of these tables, we can see the fields that are available within that particular table. For example, if we have a look at the invoice table, we have customer date, then we have the date, month, year, we've got invoice number, product, quantity and total sales. After this, you can see these values with the F function sign. These are measures that have been created. Now we looked in an earlier lesson at the difference between a measure and a calculated column. And when we put these values into, when we put, we can put the measures into our values, but we cannot put the measures into columns and rows. We can, however, put the fields into columns and rows. So let's have a look at creating a little bit of a pivot table, just for an example. Now you should have experience, as I said with this, from working with normal pivot tables in Excel. Let's go to the customer table and from the customer table, let's take our country and put our country into our rows. Then if we go to our products table and we put our products table into the column, after this, we can then go to our invoice table and in our invoice table, I'm going to take our measure for our total sales. Now we've created a pivot table that has the total sales as our value. Now the total sales is a measure as we mentioned. So if we come in here and go to value field settings, we can't really summarize this value by anything as you would as if it was a field. That's because it is a measure. If we took our total sales as a calculated column and just put that in as well, it does give us the same values because it pulls in as the aggregate sum. But we can change that aggregate at any stage. And that's the big difference, one of the big differences between a calculated column and a measure. So I'm gonna take that column out for a moment. Now, as with pivot tables, you can pivot your data, you can move things around, and you can pivot your data. We can add in additional columns from additional fields, such as we can add in our date hierarchy, and this now has added in the date. So we have our country and the year, but we can expand the year and we will also see the month. And we can also expand the month and we can see the dates within the month. Now we have this within column. We could change this to the rows and we could also place it above the products. We can collapse the fields then using these buttons here to expand and collapse the fields.
Now this is a standard pivot table. We're going to take a look at a flattened pivot table now in a moment. But with a standard pivot table, when we have items in the rows, they're pulled into the same cell, the same field. They're just indented inwards a little bit. When you're working with pivot table data, sometimes this isn't an ideal format. Sometimes you need all the dates in one column and in a separate column, you would then need the additional row fields that you are using. To do this, you would insert a flattened pivot table. So let's go back to our pivot tables and let's go pivot table and select flattened pivot table. And we're going to put this on a new worksheet. So we'll take our invoice, our total sales for our value and we will take our calendar hierarchy and we will take our customer name as well and we'll put our hierarchy into our rows now you can see the difference that we have all of the years listed in one column and in the second column we have the customer name so it's not indented underneath in the one column now this sort of data, this tabular style data is often easier to work with and you'll see that in the next video tutorial where we will be looking at some ways where we can detach this from a pivot table and use it in addi additional calculations.